Hello, my name is Julian Edgar and I'm the author of this book, Car Suspension, Over 120 Years of Ride and Handling. What I want to do in today's video is talk briefly about suspension roll centres. You might say, what's that got to do with a book on the history of car suspension? Well, in chapter one, I cover a lot of these technical details, so then it's so much easier to understand the different suspension designs that followed over 120 years. So let's take a look at suspension roll centres. In an earlier video, I talked about swing arm length, and I used as an example a simple swing arm suspension. So in that design, there is an arm that is connected to the wheel without any pivot there, and it connects, the arm connects to a pivot that's located near the middle of the car. As the wheel goes over a bump, it therefore swings around that pivot point and it changes in its camber, its angle to the horizontal. Okay, so, well, I then went the next step and I said, even if we don't have a swing arm suspension, even if, for example, we have doubled uh, wishbones that are angled, we can extend their length to a virtual pivot point, extend the lines through the pivots. There's our virtual pivot point around which the suspension virtually moves. And then if we draw that purple line in there from the virtual pivot point to the middle of the wheel, we have an effective swing arm, a virtual swing arm. It acts like, in fact, that swing arm is present. All right, two slides of recapitulation. Now, what about roll centers? Well, if we go to that virtual pivot point and draw a line from there to the middle of the tire on the road, where that green line crosses the center line of the car, keeping up, that point there is the roll center, through which effectively all the forces being transmitted laterally by the tire actually impact. So let's look at that next slide, that purple arrow, shows the roll center. Now the roll center isn't the point around which the car rolls. That's a, a bad way of thinking about it because as we'll see in a moment, roll centers move uh, during suspension deflection, but it's where all the forces, the lateral and sometimes slightly vertical forces being developed by the tire are being fed into the car's bodywork. So there we can see the roll center is a bit above ground level, but it's not always. It depends on the suspension design. Here we have perfectly parallel wishbones, therefore we have no virtual swing arm. It is in infinity, that point there is off in infinity. And so we, when we draw the line from infinity back to the middle of the uh, tire contact patch, we can see there that the roll center is actually on the ground. So the height of the roll center varies depending on suspension design. We typically talk about the roll center being along the longitudinal axis of the car, even though that can change a little bit as well, but it can be at all different heights. It can be even below the ground, it can be on the ground level, it can be above the ground level. So what? Well, the way in which those forces get fed back into that point may have a big impact on the behavior of the car. And so here, let's go back to a simple swing arm suspension uh, where we draw the line from the contact patch, center of the contact patch through the pivot point. In this case, it's a real pivot point, not a virtual one. We can divide the force being developed, which is being pushed up that way into a vertical force and a horizontal force with those uh, triangles of forces. Now, there's a vertical force in this type of suspension design when the car is cornering, it's trying to lift the bodywork. Wow, now what sort of car would have suspension like that? Well, here we go back to the Hillman Imp that we saw in our previous video. It has independent front suspension which just uses simple swing arms. It's as if that was one arm, there are the two pivot points. And so this sort of behavior occurs and that red arrow lifting upwards is called a jacking force. If we go over to this fantastic photo of the Hillman Imp cornering, you can see it's developing positive camber because the bodywork is being lifted up by the force shown by that red arrow. And so the wheels are drooping down. And therefore, when we look at what would happen if this drooped downwards or if this lifted upwards, we can see we're going to get quite a lot of positive camber. In fact, it can get to such an extreme that that wheel tucks under and suddenly you've got massive uh, snap understeer. So uh, what about uh, other impacts of the roll center? 
Well, the roll sander will determine how much a given car rolls in cornering because the higher the center of gravity of the car is above the roll center, the greater the body roll if everything else remains the same. So the lower the roll center, if the center of gravity doesn't change, the more the car will roll. Now there are other aspects as well. This is quite a complex subject. And this is a very simplified coverage. But once you have those ideas in your mind, you can start seeing the effects that different roll center heights are going to have. You can see, and I, I didn't show you, but if we went back to a previous one, if we lift the wheel, we'll see that that center there, the virtual center can change in height. And that means the roll center can change in height during cornering. It's not actually a fixed point in space. But virtual swing arm length, roll center are two of the absolute fundamentals to at least have some understanding of when you are looking at car suspension. And when I cover 120 years of ride and handling, I'm very often talking about the height of the roll center, whether the height of the roll center is different at the front and the back, uh, how high it is above the ground. If, if it is in fact above the ground, those are ideas that are used throughout this book. Thank you.